Reconciliation of Book and Taxable Income Problem 4. Artichoke Corporation reported $479,900 of net income. Compute Artichoke's taxable income based on the following. Artichoke earned $10,700 on tax-exempt municipal bonds. Artichoke's allowance for bad debts as of January 1st was $21,000. Write-offs for the year equaled $4,400 while the addition to the allowance was $3,700. The allowance on December 31st was $20,300. Artichoke paid a $6,000 fine to a municipal government for a fine. Artichoke's book depreciation equals $44,200 and maker's depreciation equals $31,000. This is Artichoke's second year. In year one, it recognized an $8,800 net capital loss. This year, it recognized a $31,000 long-term capital gain. In year one, Artichoke capitalized $6,900 of organizational costs for tax purposes and elected to amortize this amount over 180 months. For book purposes, it expensed the costs. Artichoke's federal income tax expense equals $151,000. So this question is a book to tax reconciliation question. And when you think about a corporate tax return, a C corporation, S corporation, partnership, all these business entities, they have to basically reconcile their book to taxable income in certain circumstances. Most businesses do have to do this over a certain amount. So if you're asked to do this, what you're doing is you're given book net income, which we're told is $479,900, and we need to reconcile to get taxable income. Now, you could be also asked to calculate the tax liability as well, given this information. So what we're doing is I, you're given the net income, which that's book. So that is per gap, generally accepted accounting principles, gap, book, the financial statements. And the idea is that many of you know already when you're looking at the tax rules versus the financial accounting rules or the gap rules, there are differences. There are certain things where for financial accounting, you have to include income or you have to take a deduction in a certain year that for tax purposes, you do not. So these are like differences. These are changes. Okay. So for this one, we just have to figure out taxable income. That's all it's asking for. That's the end number we're looking for. The best way to do this is to go through each of these items that are listed on the left side here, okay? And we'll go through in order. But you always, when you're given tax, when you're given net income, book income, you start with that. So the net income number, we're gonna put that at the top. And then we're gonna go through each of these. So the net income given to us, and we're gonna put a little check when we finish something, is 479000 900, it's always going to be our starting point is that number. And then from that, we're going to increase and decrease for certain adjustments based on what the rules are. Because the idea is that all these items on the left, the tax exempt municipal bonds, the bad debts, the depreciation, the fine, the net capital loss, the organizational costs, the federal income tax expense, those all went into calculating the net income for the books. So we need to say, okay, well, how would that have been treated for tax purposes? And we do adjustments. We adjust. So the first item, let's go ahead and start with that. That's municipal bonds. So we're going to do that right now. So Artichoke earned $10,700 on tax-exempt municipal bonds, so interest bonds. So the way that we do this is we think about how something is reported for book purposes, how it's reported for tax purposes. And by the way, um, if you're taking one of my classes, the I, I don't expect you to know every single difference between the tax law and the and the financial accounting rules. I just expect you to understand these different things through the videos. So the idea is that my videos give you enough examples so you'll know the big important ones. Like municipal bond interest, the first thing we're doing is very important. Or depreciation. And a lot of them you're going to see repetition. For those people that are taking other professors, you might be expected to learn other things, other items, but I will tell you that in my videos, I have the major ones, the most important ones, the most common ones, but there's, there's lots of different differences. So the first item, $10,700 on tax exempt municipal bonds. So that goes into financial accounting income, but for tax purposes, there's a provision in the tax law in the internal revenue code that says that interest on municipal bonds that's ta considered tax exempt is not income not income. So it does not go in gross income. So that means we're going to have to subtract that away. So we are going to subtract away from the 479,900. We're going to subtract away this amount of 10,700. So we subtract that away. Or how about rather than do subtractions, let's just do, um, let's just do, um, parentheses. If, if it's going to be a subtraction. Okay. So $10,700, we're going to subtract that away. And that comes from 
the municipal bond interest. So again, what's going on here? In calculating the 479,900, that's net income. Remember that comes from the income statement, the book income statement. So the idea there is we had revenues, right? Sales and fees earned and various revenues minus expenses, okay? And that gives us our net income. Now, one of the revenues is interest income and for financial accounting purposes, the $10,700 was included, but for tax purposes, it should not be included as a special rule, okay? Another thing is with the problems I give you, with the information I give you, the, everything is going to have some type of adjustment you need to adjust for, okay, for, for, for my class. It's possible, again, if you're taking another professor, they might give you information that might not make an adjustment. Now, not every little number or information is, is important, but you have enough to make the adjustment. So the next thing is actually a few different lines, and it deals with bad debt expense. It says that artichokes allowance for bad debts as of January 1st was $21,000. Write-offs for the year were $4,400, while the addition to the allowance was $3,700. The allowance on December 31st is $20,300. By the way, this business, if you're not told, you always assume it's a calendar year business. January 1st to December 31st. So I'm giving you the beginning balance and the ending balance. Now, for purposes of financial accounting gap, Remember, that's what the net income is. We use the allowance method, the reserve method. But for tax purposes, the only method you can use is the direct write-off method. Those are two different methods. And you need to go back and remember from your financial accounting class that you've learned that there's differences in the methods. Okay? So what we do here is we have to do an adjustment. And the idea is that the write-offs for the year are 4700 or I'm sorry, 4400 my apologies, $4,400. Okay, $4,400. That's actually what's written off. But the amount that was actually taken per the books, while the addition to the allowance, that's, that's the actual entry under the reserve method. So the idea under the reserve or allowance method is that we record the expense every year as an estimate. We don't record the expense when we write it off. That's what we do for tax purposes. So the idea is that the 479900 number, that's what we need. That, that's, that, that takes into account the write-off method. The 4,400, I'm sorry, does not take into account the write-offs in terms of the expense. It takes into account the amount you've adjusted the, the allowance by, okay? The amount you adjusted the allowance. So in order to adjust for that, what we do is we're going to take the, for, for tax purposes, and this is how you do this always, based, based on the way this information is given. You take the amount of the bad debt expense that was taken on the books. So book, bad debt expense for the year, which remember I told you because for financial accounting, we always, we always use the allowance method. So you look for the addition to the allowance, which we're told is $3,700. So we want that. That's 3,700. Okay. And then we subtract away from that. We subtract away the actual write-offs. And the idea here is that we need to add back. I'm sorry. We need to take from a subtraction, we basically need to add back the, the book amount and then we need to subtract away the 4,400 portion. Okay. So there's two ways to look at this. You can calculate the difference. Okay. Between these two numbers. I like to just think of it as we're going to add back the 3,700 that was on the books. And then for tax purposes, we really need to take what, what would be written off for tax purposes. So the Again, the book method is the reserve method, the allowance method, which took into account the $3,700 for expense. The tax method takes into account the write-off number. Tax, we use the write-offs. And the write-offs are $4,400. Now, this is an expense, so that's why we're, we're doing a subtraction there. So we're going to subtract away $4,400 there, and we do those two numbers. Okay, so that is the, um, that, that's how we deal with the, the allowance for doubtful accounts and bad debts. That's how we deal with the adjustment. Again, the idea there is you want to add back what you did for book purposes because we use a different method. And then you actually want to subtract out what you should be taking, which is the direct write-offs. Okay. For tax, we use the direct write-off method. So we're going to write off the actual amounts written off during the year. Okay. Now we're moving on to the artichoke paid a $6,000 fine to a municipal government. So for financial accounting purposes, you are allowed to take that as a deduction. You are allowed to deduct that. But for tax purposes, you cannot deduct that. The tax law says you cannot deduct fines. So we're going to need to add that back. We're going to need to add back that deduction to get our taxable income. So that's going to be a positive. So we're not going to put brackets there. Okay, the next item is we have book depreciation and we have tax appreciation. So for this one, we're going to need to do a calculation. Um, or you can think of it again like the 
the way we did allowance for doubtful accounts, you basically need to add back the $44,200 of book depreciation and we subtract away the, um, the maker's appreciation. And by the way, another way to think of the AFDA and bad debt, you could have just done a net number, which some people like to do net. And, and sometimes in my, the homework that I use in my class, it reports a net number. So 3,700 minus negative 4,400 results in a, uh, a negative 700. So you could show the, show the negative 700. Okay. Or as you see here, I just put the numbers over in there on the right. Same thing for the book depreciation and maker's appreciation. So the maker's appreciation is tax. Book depreciation is what we use for books. The idea here, as many of you know, for book purposes, we normally use straight line depreciation. For tax purposes, we use makers, which is actually, for most property, it's faster than straight line. It's like 150% decline balance or double decline balance. So the idea here is that we need to add back the book depreciation. So book depreciation, we're going to add that back, and that's going to be the $44,200 amount. So that's going to be a positive added back. So we bring that over, $44,200. And then the actual tax depreciation, that's what we should be subtracting away, and that's going to be a reduction because expenses reduce, right, income. So we bring that over, thirty negative $31,000. So that's what you're doing. You're basically taking out the expense that you were taking for book purposes and actually subtracting away the tax purpose depreciation. That's what's going on there. Another thing, again, is um, based on the homework is that sometimes it asks you to net these two. If you were just netting the two numbers, then it would be a positive uh, $13,000. $200. Now, one thing I want to stop and say is that, by the way, depreciation is an example of a timing difference. The reason why is because you're going to take the same amount of depreciation for book and tax purposes. That's not going to make a difference. But the when you take the depreciation over time, it's going to be different. So let's say you have an asset that's depreciable over six years. And the idea there is that you're going to do straight line. Let's say it's $60,000 over six years, straight line. Um, it's going to be $10,000 a year for book purposes. But for financial accounting purposes, it's not going to be $10,000 a year. It's going to be double declining balance. So you're going to be taking more than um, $10,000 in the first year. But then at the end, as it goes over time, it's going to be less than $10,000, but it's still going to equal the $60,000. Okay, so that's the idea of a temporary difference. Okay, so now we're going down to the, the next item, which is this is Artichoke's second year. And with respect to the second year, or the first year, there was an $8,800 $8, net capital loss, okay, $8,800 net capital loss, and um, this year recognized a $31,000 uh, long-term capital gain. So the idea there is that for tax purposes, you normally cannot take a, a capital loss. You're limited by the amount of capital gains for corporations, so you're limited. But for financial accounting purposes, you can take it. So the idea here is that we need to adjust the tax books because last year for book purposes, we got this, but for tax purposes, we didn't, we weren't able to get this. So the best way to do this here is that there's a carry forward that you're allowed. That's what the tax law does. It allows the carry forward. So this $8,800, we're going to simply just take it out. We're going to subtract it. So a loss provides a subtraction. So the idea is that for financial accounting purposes, in year one, you got it but not for tax purposes. We had to add it back. So then we had to basically, we now get it in this year. So that's the idea is that it's kind of like the timing issue. I just talked about depreciation. We, for book purposes, we got $800 deduction on the books in year one, but we had to add it back for tax purposes because again, it's limited. But for uh, tax this year, we can take it because the rule is that as long as you have capital gain, which we have $31,000, you can now take that. You can now deduct it. So because the $31,000 long-term capital gain is greater or equal to the $8,800, you can now take that $8,800 this year. So that's why it's a subtraction. Okay, so now we're going down to the next item. In year one, Artichoke capitalized a $6,900 organizational cost for tax purposes and elected to amortize this over um, 180 months. So the idea there is if we take $6,900, and we divide that by 180, and then we multiply that by 12 months for the second year, we're going to get that adjustment's going to be $460, $460. That equals 460. Now, the idea is that for book purposes, in the first year, it was expensed, okay? So we had to add all that back, or at least the portion that we weren't allowed to take for tax purposes. That's what you're doing here. For book, If something is not allowed for tax purposes, you basically add it back. So in our first year, last year, 
they're 6,900. And assuming that we started on January 1st, we were able to take 460 in year one. So we had to add back a portion um, to year one. This year, we're not doing anything for book. So because we did it all in year one. So just like the last one, this one, we get to subtract away the 460 because now we get the benefit over time. So it's a timing difference. And then finally, the artichoke federal income tax expense. The rule is for, um, for purposes of the tax law, you don't get a deduction for federal, federal income federal income tax expense. So for books, you do take that as a deduction. You take income tax expense, but you don't get that for um, for income tax purposes. So that's going to be an addition. We have to add that back because for book purposes, we got a subtraction one hundred fifty one thousand. Okay. So now we basically start with our four hundred seventy nine thousand nine hundred. We basically do all these subtractions and additions as we went down the line, and we get our taxable income which is what we're solving for, our taxable income. And that amount, when you calculate all these numbers together, is $629,440. So that is the answer to this problem. The taxable income is $629,440. Now I have some additional problems that walk you through these uh, book to tax differences. This is meant to be the first one where you go through things. The other ones kind of build off this. We do a little bit more analysis. We see some more examples, but this is kind of the baseline. Make sure you go back to this and understand. Now, again, with the depreciation example and the bad debts, as you can see, what I did was I showed you the numbers on the right side where you're, where you're basically adding back the number from what we took for the expense for book purposes, and we actually subtract away what you, what you should take for tax. Again, you can also do the net effect as well, and if you do either one, it'll give you the right, the correct result, the correct amount. So what I'm saying is like rather than put the 3,700 positive and the negative 4,200, you could just put a negative $700 rather than those two numbers. Or for the depreciation, rather than put positive 44,200 and negative 31,000, you could just put a positive 13,200 because it nets to that a number. So keep that in mind because some of the other problems you're going to see, I'm just going to use the net number in some of those respective lines. All right. So with that, make sure you go back through this, understand what's going on. And again, there's additional videos to help you understand.